types of microscopes. So this is the 3.2.1.3 methods of studying cells in the 3.2 cells topic. So you need to know the principles and limitations of optical microscopes transmission electron microscopes and scanning electron microscopes and you need to know that measuring the size of an object viewed you need to be able to calculate the size of an object viewed with an optical microscope and the difference between magnification and resolution so optical or light microscopes are cheap and portable and light passes through the specimen so it passes up through the illuminator through the slide and then it is focused by the objective lens and the eyepiece lens so you usually have um, in schools times four times ten and times forty objectives and then your eyepiece lens is usually times ten and you might need to stain the specimen so that you can see it a bit clearer. So like with an onion cell, you'd stain it with iodine. So the good things about light microscopes or optical microscopes is that you can view live objects. However, it is much lower resolution than electron microscope. And the resolution is the ability to distinguish between two points. Maximum magnification of an optical microscope is 1500 and the maximum resolution is about 2 micrometers and the resolution is limited by the wavelength of visible light. So electron microscopes now. So electron microscopes use a beam of electrons instead of light. So electromagnets are used to focus the beam of electrons and there is a vacuum inside the microscope. So electron microscopes are good because they have a maximum magnification of about times 500,000 and they have a maximum resolution of approximately 1 to 5 nanometers. The big downside is that the specimen or material must be dead because it's placed in a vacuum and the image that is produced is black and white although you can artificially colour it using a computer. So there are two types of electron microscope. You've got a transmission electron microscope or TEM and this is where the electromagnet you use an electromagnet to focus a beam of electrons and the denser parts absorb more electrons so they appear darker. The tissue is fixed and embedded in a resin and then thin slices are taken using a microtome. And it can be stained using heavy metals which is a very complex procedure so you would need trained professionals to be able to do that. Next one is a scanning electron microscope or SEM and this is where a beam of electrons scans over the surface of the specimen and the reflected electrons form an image. So 3D images are produced on the computer screen. It's slightly lower resolution than a transmission electron microscope at about 20 nanometers but it's good because you can, can use thick specimens. There are examples of some done by a scanning electron microscope. So if you were to compare overall light microscopes and electron microscopes, um, the illumination and source is light from a lamp in a light microscope. The focusing is a glass lens. Detection is by the eye. Magnification is times 1500. Resolution is about 200 nanometers and it's used to observe tissue cells and small organisms. The specimen can be living or dead. And the staining is, involves coloured dyes. The cost is fairly cheap in comparison to electron microscope. 
And then electron microscopes. This is where electrons are focused and by electromagnets. Detection is by a phosphor screen or a film. The magnification is 500,000 times. The resolution is one nanometer. The, it's used to observe cell organelles, microscopes and viruses. The specimen produced uh, the specimen that you use is usually dead. Uh, the staining is done by using heavy metals and the cost is, is very expensive. Now, I just need to say a bit about what microscope artifacts are. So artifacts are things that you can see down the microscope that aren't part of the cell or specimen that you're looking at. And they could be anything from bits of dust or air bubbles and fingerprints to inaccuracies caused by squashing and staining your sample. Artifacts are usually made during the preparation of your specimen and shouldn't really be there at all. And artifacts are especially common in electron micrographs because specimens need a lot of preparation before you can view them under an electron microscope. The first scientist to use electron microscopes could only distinguish between artifacts and organelles by repeatedly preparing specimens in different ways. If an object could be seen with one preparation technique but another is more likely to be an artifact rather than an organelle. So in summary, the you need to know the principles and limitations of optical microscopes, transmission electron microscopes and scanning electron microscopes. And you should be able to appreciate that there was a considerable period of time during which the scientific community distinguished between artefacts and cell organelles.